My name is Emmanuel Christian, and I am the founding president of Water International, as well as Vine Press Ministries. In Vine Press, we do um, we plant churches and uh, we train pastors and leaders, and we also do missions. But uh, for the last 15 years of ministry, one thing that I've realized, we still need more missionaries to reach out to so many people out there in the world that have never heard the gospel of Jesus. When you are in towns or in cities, you may think that the gospel has been preached enough. But there are so many more places around the world where we have not reached especially the countryside, in the villages, deeper villages, in most countries of Africa, on the continent. So the uh, reason why the gospel has not reached those places is, is because of uh, the network problems, the signal problems. They cannot actually uh, have access to, the, to, te to television, to TVs, and also access to radios. So, uh, they don't have internet, there's no electricity. There's no electricity, they have no access to internet. So, they are so limited to the information and also to the gospel which is uh, being preached in towns and uh, cities. So, uh, uh, with missions, I am here to call upon um, all people who have a heart for the gospel the heart and the spirit uh, for the gospel because uh, it is really important uh, if we engage ourselves in winning souls but not only in towns and in urban places but also in villages the hard to reach places those are the places I'm talking about especially in Africa in Asia and uh, in some parts of Europe so as the Bible says in the book of uh, Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 24, verses 14, that, and this gospel of the kingdom of God shall be preached to the ends of the earth. And uh, uh, to the ends of the earth uh, for the witness unto the whole world, and then the end shall come to pass. So it is a mandate for all of us, it is uh, a burden for all of us to engage ourselves preaching of the gospel. That is uh, what we, 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 we need to do as a church, as a body of Christ, as anyone. It is a mandate for everyone, not for the evangelists only, but each one of us. We are assigned to preach and to win souls for Christ. So um, Jesus is coming back soon, and we, know all, we all know that, but uh, he still has uh, a need for missionaries, people who can reach out to the poor communities. You know, it's easy to preach to the poor uh, than to the rich. So it's easy to win the soul of a poor person because uh, the poor give an ear, they listen. They listen, they have a desire to listen and they're desperate for God. So, um, it is easier to reach out to the poor and if you give yourself for uh, the work of the gospel, it is one of the most important things you have done in your entire life. So, um, uh, of course, uh, we, most of us, we, we, we make money and we save our monies and we also look for the way how to spend them. Uh, some of you, you may think uh, of spending your money on, holi on holiday, on a trip. Uh, you may s decide to spend your money on shopping, but spending your money in winning a soul is the best investment you have ever made for God. And uh, Instead of planning for a holiday or for a trip, you rather plan for a mission. And uh, your money would really make, uh, your savings would really make uh, profits for God if 
It was invested in mission or in the gospel. You, you, you pay yourself a ticket, you pay yourself a visa, and you go with us to the mission, to the remote places of Africa. Those places are very interesting. Imagine uh, uh, some of the places you've never been before. And um, the reason as to why we reach out to such, such places, regardless of how remote they are or how hard it is to reach out to them, is simply because Jesus argued us in the, in the Gospel of Mark 16, 15. And he said, go out to the whole world and preach the gospel. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. What does he mean by all creation? Not only humans, but all creation. The trees, the birds of the air, the animals, and the people as well. So we... We, we, when, we, when you read this scripture, you may get confused a little bit by the term creation, because creation is not all about humans, but every creature. Every creature has a right to listen and to hear the gospel. You don't know, you, you, nobody has ever told you that every creature has ears. They hear the word of God, and they have life in them. Even though they don't actually respond, but they work as witnesses that you were actually on that village. The trees will witness and they will testify before the Lord that one day, one time, you visited their village. The cows, the goats, the cats and the dogs, they don't talk, but they're witnesses. So one day, they will testify They'll recognize, they recognize and they will remember that you visited their place. So uh, every creature works as a witness. We witness to them because they will witness uh, uh, for us that we were able to reach out to those places. Uh, in Matthew chapter 10, verses 9, uh, the Bible says, I think, let me read it there for you so I can quote the scripture right well. The Bible says, uh, do, not en do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff. For the, work, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for someone, worthy person, and stay at their house until you leave. And um, in verses 12, the Bible says, As you enter the, the home, their home, give it your greetings. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than of that town. So, the Bible says that, you know, when you read the scripture, it's quite complicated. That you shouldn't take yourself silver, gold, and copper. What does it mean? You know, in those days of the, of the disciples, the days of Jesus, uh, they were doing a lot of barter trade. So they were doing exchange of goods in terms of uh, gold, silver, and copper. What does it mean? Uh, when we turn it into our present day, the modern day uh, of trading, we use cash, we use money, we use uh, visa cards, we use uh, so many other means of payments, uh, the online payments. And what worries people so much is uh, how am I going to survive? How am I going to make it? That bothers people so much. And um, they think that it would be so much expensive for them. This, this scripture doesn't necessarily mean that you don't go there with anything. No. Of course, when you're going for a mission, you pack some things. You put uh, things like um, your clothes, some of the clothes. Though the Bible says don't take another shirt with you. 
a second shirt. It simply means that the work of a missionary, the missionary work is just as simple as that. It's not a hard job. But it is okay to pack yourself three to five t-shirts and jeans. And also to use, uh, you can put in, uh, you can pack your boots as well because there are so many places where we go to where you find that the place is so muddy and you will need your boots. Of course, you have to pack your toothbrush, your toothpaste, your Vaseline's and some medicine. Because, you know, in Africa, we have mosquitoes. So you have to pack your mosquito net or you buy it on the way. Because I know in, uh, in the Western world, there's nothing like mosquitoes. We have them in Uganda and in many parts of, the, of Africa. So you bring yourself some medicine as a missionary. You bring yourself a torch. You bring yourself a blanket. You bring yourself uh, an air bag or an air bed. Where, which you can use uh, to sleep. You can also carry a tent. Yeah, you can carry a tent because you don't expect a hotel or uh, a guest room or a guest house in most of the remote countryside. So uh, you need uh, a tissue as well. Yeah, you need a tissue, you need a bottle of water. You need a bottle of water, you need um, some uh, f uh, facilities, some of the properties that you that are essential for the travel. But what you should consider is that you have to be flexible and fitting. Because most of, the, uh, of these um, villages, they don't have running water. You have to be careful. You don't drink any kind of water for the sake of your health. So when I'm traveling to the villages, I go with boxes of mineral water. The water that I will use to, bl uh, to brush my, uh, my, my teeth and also to drink, for drinking. So you have to be careful and uh, you don't forget that uh, your life is so much important. So you don't just drink any water when you reach there. Carry your water with you. Or if you cannot carry water with you, you boil water. You boil water and so you, you, can, have, uh, you can live with good health at your mission. Uh, one of the things that you must notice or note as you are traveling for mission is that there is no running water. You don't expect uh, a good uh, bathroom with a bathtub and sinks, of course, and you don't expect uh, a modern bathroom. Bathrooms in villages are made of uh, uh, plantation, plantations. They plant something around that small uh, space that they want to use as their bathrooms. Time for bathing. When you're on mission, what do you expect? A bathroom without a shower? Oh my God. So, when you're on mission in Africa and time for bathing comes, this is the bathroom, as you can see it. So, you don't have to expect a shower here or a sink. But, you squat. This is the birth tub. You use this area to bathe. You pour, you simply pour the water in the, in the basin like this. Of course, you put off your clothes. <laughs> you hang them anywhere here, like here, uh, like here. And then you put off the clothes, you bathe. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's funny, but also an adventure. So if you plan to go for a mission in Africa, expect a beautiful bathroom like this. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> The same applies to urinals. They don't have the modern urinals. So when you ask for a urinal, you want to ease yourself or to pee, uh, they will actually show you a, a small space which is uh, covered, uh, which is covered uh, uh, with uh, b banana fibers around it. Banana fibers around it. And when you are in there, you see everyone uh, outside. 
there is no privacy. But of course, uh, it is convenient for you and don't expect a door. There's no, there are no doors on the urinals. The same applies to the toilets. Oh my God, one of the best experiences you'll find when you go for a mission in villages, <laughs> you'll find a pit latrine. But on the pit latrines of the modern world, as you think, this is, uh, most of, uh, of course I understand most of you have even never heard what a pit latrine is. And may ask yourself, what is a pit latrine? A pit latrine is a toilet, but it's not a flushing toilet. It's actually a hole. They dig a hole and then they cover on the top of it and they leave a wall, a, a hole, uh, uh, a small hole uh, in the middle, in the middle of the room, of the small room. Uh, you just squat there and then you pee. So I've been there and it's, it's really funny, but it's so exciting and also a good experience. So you don't expect a door at a, at a latrine. You, you find um, uh, that uh, uh, you find that they, they, they put uh, something like a cover. Uh, it's like uh, a cover paper in front of the door, and the doors are not uh, uh, seven uh, feet or six feet. The doors are actually like around three to four feet. So you bend so much to enter there, and you cannot stand in there. No, you can't. So as you go in bending, you are bending there and also you you have to squat of course you have to squat to do it and afterwards you come out it's so interesting it's such an, an adventure uh, it's a story to tell when you visit such areas so one thing you should also note about the villages each and every village has their standards of living and their way of their standards of living and this, they have different kinds of businesses where they generate their income. Most of them are, are basically agriculture and agriculture ag agriculturists, and uh, they are cultivators of the land. They are, they are livestock keepers, and uh, it's so interesting when you go there because you will not find a market where you can buy food. They plant their own food. They have all kinds of foods. They have the potatoes. If you have never seen the potatoes uh, in, the, in the garden, you can see them there. Yeah, they, they have potatoes. When, when, whenever I go to the missions, uh, to, to visit villages, we don't find markets. They bring their food from, the, uh, from their gardens. They have potatoes, they have, of course, pumpkins, and they have uh, beans, uh, sweet potatoes, bananas and they prepare everything in their local way. So uh, it is so interesting that you don't have to spend money for food, on food, no, 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 no. Don't expect a Walmart there, don't expect uh, internet there. First, first of all, you will be completely offline, but safe. Don't expect an online uh, 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 shop there that you order anything like coffee and they bring it. No, 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 no. There, Alaska doesn't work. So you, you will actually eat um, the local food, fresh from the gardens. And uh, you will love the way how they prepare their food and all that kind of stuff. They have milk. Most of the villages, they do livestock farming. They have cows and cattle. They have pigs and they have local ki uh, chicken and they also have goats. So it is interesting to see that they have to milk the milk you're going to take right from the cow and then they boil it when you are seeing and then you drink fresh milk. It is interesting to see uh, these guys milking uh, your milk for, for the breakfast. They milk it as you're, you are watching and then they prepare it for you and you enjoy your breakfast. So of course on breakfast you don't expect bread they will provide you with cassava and uh, sweet potatoes and fresh food. You will love it. So not only that, uh, one of the other uh, uh, um, interesting things when you go for missionary is that you find people who will welcome you with such a warm welcome. 
they are actually excited to see someone who have traveled, who has traveled all those miles to them. And everyone will gather to talk to you. They want to talk to you. It's not like in the US or in the Europe where everyone is busy and no one has time to talk to you. Everyone gives you attention because they, you are different to them. You're a new person and if you're white, all kids will gather around you. They like uh, to touch you and of course uh, to say hello to you. Everyone is attentive. They want to listen to you. So it is interesting. Don't forget your, your camera or your phone because you will have to take so many photos and uh, make some videos. It's so interesting. It's so lovely. You will not uh, actually get bored. You will love everything. So one of the most important things is that uh, they are welcoming and they are listening. They pay attention. You know, churches there are not like the churches you know in, in the cities and in the modern world. They, are, they build uh, muddy and, 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 and grass-thatched uh, churches. So they, 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 they smear their walls with mud and also make their floors uh, with cow dung. It's so interesting. They also have, uh, they use their local uh, drums to make their instruments and, and praise and worship God in an amazing way. They jump, they dance, they clap their hands, just as we do in the modern world, but they use local drums. It is so interesting how the drums sound, and um, you will love it. You will love it. So uh, they are very loving and welcoming. You don't have to worry about uh, security, no. You are safe there because everyone is protecting you. You are actually not a guest to the host, but you are a guest to the old village. The old village comes to greet you. The old village comes to say hello to you and you are welcome. They give you fruits like jackfruits. Uh, most of you have never heard of a jackfruit or seen it. It is very sweet, very sweet. Uh, jackfruits and mangoes and oranges, all kinds of fruits. They have them there. And the most interesting part of it, when they are preparing you meals, they don't actually buy kilos of beef or of goat meat. No, they kill a cow. They kill for you a calf or a goat. So they prepare it all for you as their guest because they have a lot of goats and they have a lot of cow. So you, you are given such, you are treated in such a royal uh, kind of uh, welcome and they give you such kind of treatment and you are really going to enjoy, be ready to eat everything, everything and fresh food. So, um, the reason as to why Jesus is saying that don't take, your, don't take any bag, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will not take a bag or anything with you. No. You will take a bag, of course. You will take, um, you carry yourself with your drugs and uh, uh, the torches and the boots because in the villages don't expect tamaka roads, don't expect uh, good roads. You will find muddy places, muddy roads and uh, you will need boots as well. You need your jacket. You need your jacket. You need uh, your raincoat as well. You need a raincoat. But it's more, it's uh, actually one of the most important things you will ever do in life is visiting a village, is preaching to the villagers, to the people in the countryside, in the remote places of the world, wherever you have never reached. So, uh, I urge you all of you guys who are watching me out there that when you think about a holiday and a trip, think about a mission to winning souls. So anybody can be a missionary. You can be a missionary. And you can spend your money on mission by buying yourself a ticket, by paying yourself a visa, you come and visit Africa. So, in our mission, we have so many places where you can go to uh, in East Africa, in West Africa, and in South Africa. 
we have so many connections there so you just reach out, out out to us and you tell us i want to come to africa i've never been to africa i want to be in west africa or east africa or central africa or south africa we have so many places there where you can go to and we have more places in uganda as well uganda kenya and tanzania so uh, think about it plan your next trip uh, in 2024 as a mission to winning souls. You will be blessed and you will not regret.